topic of the video today. It's all about public service broadcasters and conglomerates and parent companies which are conglomerates and all that cool jazz. I'm trying to make it sound way cooler than it actually is, but I'm trying and that's worth something, right? Okay, first things first. The BBC, or the British Broadcasting Channel, is a public service broadcaster. This means that the BBC is publicly funded by a TV licence, which is paid annually by everybody, which is like £145.50. However, there is some downsides to being a public service broadcaster. Firstly, you're not actually allowed to show any adverts or have any sponsorships in your video, so when I think of sponsorships, I think of like the meerkats who go on Coronation Street. Another downside is they're not actually able to pour funds into a particular product to make it better because the BBC live by the motto that they must have a programme for everybody. Lord Reef, Rafe, Roof, who cares? I'm not gonna lie either, his his job is way more mundane than his name would suggest Mr. Lord Rafe, Rafe, Roof, Rife, man, person. Lord Rafe lives by the mantra that the BBC must educate, entertain and inform. This is why they have a mix of shows like Documentaries such as Human Planet and Blue Planet and Arctic Planet and Plant Planet. All shows by our Lord and Saviour, Sir David Attenborough. Thank you, Mr. Attenborough. I love you. Peace. It's a cool dude. Never met him, but I would love to. He'd be like, he's like Morgan Freeman for British people. Then there's the more obvious shows that entertain, like Strictly Come Dancing and Doc 2 and Great British Bake Off. Despite mentioning the downsides of being a public service broadcaster before, there is actually a lot of good things about being a public service broadcaster. There is always a guaranteed income at the end of the day because of the TV license that everybody pays. Another advantage is they typically garner a larger audience as a public service broadcaster as they typically have shows for everybody as the whole mantra thing would suggest. An example of that would be the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, which I'm not 100% on this fact, but I heard that the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, it had the largest audience of any BBC show ever. Don't quote me on that though, because I'm not 100%, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know? You can't. The third and possibly best advantage of being a public service broadcaster is that you are always guaranteed to be able to film national events first, like the Queen's Jubilee, or Queen's Crumpet Eating Contest, or other British things that nobody outside of Britain would understand, care for, or really just pay any attention to. Alright, so to keep this next bit from being too boring, I will try and include different things and also mix it up a bit to make it a bit more interesting. Now it's time to talk about everybody's favourite part of this, conglomerate companies, or parent companies as they're also known in some places somewhere. A conglomerate company is a large company that owns smaller companies. Examples of this include Disney, which own Marvel and Lucas Films, or Lucas Arts, Google, which owns YouTube and Android, News Corp, which own 21st Century Fox. These smaller companies, which are owned by the parent companies or the conglomerates, are known as subsidiary. 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 Oh, I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need some water for this. Jesus Christ. There we go. All right. Cool. The small companies which are owned by the conglomerates or the parent companies are known as subsidiary companies. Examples of subsidiary companies include the pre mentioned Marvel, YouTube. Alright, so firstly, I've been asked to do a case study on Marvel, so I need to talk about how Marvel got bought out by um, the, the parent company, Disney. So, I will represent them with these two heads that I found on Google Images and cut them out and glued them together. So Disney officially got the rights to All Things Marvel July 2nd, 2013. So this would usually involve like the big guy or the boss or the, the yeah, the, the, the biggest people in Disney just go up to Marvel Studios and they'll just be like, we would like for you to work for us for commercial reasons. And then Marvel would just like, okay, I will accept your offer as money is good for our company and commercial reasons. All right, so enough joking now. 
Um, Marvel is actually a multimedia company. This means that they create all forms of media such as comic books, figures, movies, games, all sorts. And they even release soundtracks, but not for all of the movies. Some that you might have heard of are like the Guardians of the Galaxy mixtape thing that was coming around around 2013, 14. The most likely reason why Marvel are a multimedia company is because you have a better chance of reaching a larger demographic because of the fact that it's over multiple forms of media, so you are more likely to appeal to a way, way wider audience. So the highest grossing film of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is The Avengers with 1.52 billion US dollars made from the box office, which is crazy, like really really crazy. That, that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And the Marvel film with the lowest box office earnings is The Incredible Hulk with 263.4 million, which is still, granted, a lot of money. So Marvel's main competition is the DC Universe, which is owned by 21st Century Fox. The advantages of having competition is you always have something to strive towards being better than. Granted, that the DC Universe is, isn't doing that good lately. Like, are you okay there? Are you okay there, DC, with with your your Suicide Squad and your Batman vs Superman? You're not looking not looking too good. That much of competition, but hey ho, what can you do? So yeah, that's that's my video in a nutshell. I hope I've informed, educated, and entertained you. So, yeah, it's worked out with the BBC, but whatever. But yeah, in all seriousness, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It has been a pleasure to make it. And yeah, I hope I've informed you on new things that you didn't know. But yeah, for now, this is goodbye from Niall. Later, guys. Bye.